how's Braxton doing? I know you guys, Urban Meyer said you expected a big jump from Braxton today. Yeah, but not until this afternoon. Okay. Uh, in, on two a days, we give him the morning off throwing, and then he throws in the afternoon. So he'll he'll throw this afternoon. Uh, got a lot of reps with the team today, this morning, because it's a uh, kind of a run emphasis in the morning, full pads, and and so we threw him in for all the runs with the the number one offense, and did a good job with all his reads and getting guys lined up, getting them in the right spot. But we'll know a lot more after this afternoon's practice in terms of how the arm's feeling. Tom, how much of a blessing is, not a blessing maybe, but a silver lining has been that you've gotten to work with the other two quarterbacks maybe a little bit more, oh, it's, or three quarterbacks? Yeah, it's been great for them, and it really, you never want to not throw as a quarterback, I get that. But it's been good for Braxton, too, to be able to step back. And again, kind of like what we did in the spring, he's, he's uh, very much engaged. He's calling out protections. He's going through through his reads, all that stuff. And then for those young guys to get the the live reps is invaluable. I mean, you can't put a can't put a, a value on it because that usually doesn't happen. And uh, so uh, we're making the most of it. Obviously, we'd prefer it the other way. Don't yeah. get me wrong, yeah. but uh, we're certainly making the most of to, it. To the quickies, uh, Urban said that JT he thought jumped ahead like Saturday. I'm sure you were aware of that. Uh, and. In your mind, I mean, how is that battle going? I mean, is, is JT have a slight, slight lead now, and why? Sure, uh, he's the offense moves better when he's in there, and uh, you know, we, you can throw all the completion percentages. He's probably completing more balls and making more of the right reads and more of the right reads in the run game. But at the end of the day, the offense moves when he's in, and sometimes it it doesn't as much. Not that Cardell's doing a bad job, but the offense move more frequently when JT is the quarterback, and that's the sign of a good one. Tom, do you guys have any concern at all that Braxton wouldn't be ready by August 30th? Not yet, no. I, I think it's too early to have that concern. I think the trainers are uh, optimistic. They're, they're, you know, Everything is, is uh, on schedule. Had a little bit of a setback with some additional soreness that we weren't expecting, but um, I, I'm not ready to say concerned is the right word. Are, you, are you at all concerned that you guys haven't really been able to work with him as much as, you know, with the first team every day? I mean, I know you're you know, two weeks now away from, and he hasn't really been full go since, you know, before the Orange Bowl. So is no, there any? No, I, I don't. I think it's all, it's very independent. Um, what he has to do is independent of what the other guys have to do in terms of, you know, if, if we don't block a guy, that same guy's not getting blocked for JT Barrett, that's not getting blocked for Braxton Miller. And vice, you know, if we run a route too short, that same route's getting run too short as it is for Braxton Miller, as it is for JT Barrett. So I think, you know, at the end of the day, he's got to get in there and get his own rust off but in terms of how it relates to the to the offense as a whole, I, I think we'll be just fine. No, the this thing is the offense working as a unit. I mean, uh, yeah, a little I'm, bit rusty I, itself. I mean, I, with him being limited, you understand? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I, we'll see. I guess I, I, I I've never really um, experienced that. So, and I've had guys go down for you know extended weeks of you know periods of time. I I mean, at the end of the day. He missed three weeks last last year, and he came back against who was it, Wisconsin or Penn State, and had one of his best games of his career. So, and we did offensively too. So I don't I don't think there's I don't anticipate any ill effects from that. Tom, how much did he throw in the summer with guys? I mean, did did he get a chance to to throw some balls in the summer and establish? Oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think he was cleared to start throwing throwing like July 1st and I mean it was like every other day he was out here throwing routes and uh, you know full speed throwing and he'd take a day off and come back out and throw routes so I, as far as I know um, because the NCAA rules say I, I right. can't know all the details of, of all of that but as far as I know he got out and, and threw the ball around quite effectively. Is he more limited now than he would have been say when he started throwing? I don't know because we didn't start practice then, so I, I, I mean, it's hard for me to speculate. So he, he is where he is right now, not because the the shoulder is injured, but because of the fatigue of multiple practices, the practice.
practices day after day after day after day, you know, 50, 60, 70 balls being thrown, uh, the, the thing's going to get tired. You know, the muscles aren't ready for that, and so we've got to continue to build them up. So, you know, going out and throwing routes, you know, 30 routes for 20 minutes with the wideouts is a lot different than going out and practicing a full two-hour practice with your team. So we, we just got to continue to build them up to where you can do that muscle-wise.